What's up guys and welcome back to the Keep It Techie channel and today we're diving into something that's going to make your dev life a whole lot easier and that's Jenkins on Ubuntu server. Now if you guys have never heard of Jenkins, it's an open source automation server that helps you automate the repetitive technical tasks involved in continuous integration and delivery of software. So if you're into DevOps or just looking to streamline your development process, Jenkins is a tool you'll want to have in your arsenal. So let's get into it and see how to set it up on Ubuntu server. Now, before we get to the install, I want to go to the website for Jenkins. This is Jenkins.io. You can actually download Jenkins here. You can also check out their documentation that can help you out through the setup process. But what can Jenkins do for you? Well, Jenkins is all about automation. So whether you're running tests, deploying applications, or setting up continuous integration, continuous deployment, the CI, CD pipelines, Jenkins has everything you need. Now, imagine pushing your code to GitHub and Jenkins automatically testing it, builds it out, and deploys it to your server. It's like having a dedicated assistant that never sleeps. Plus, Jenkins is highly customizable with hundreds of plugins to integrate with your existing tools. So this makes it a perfect fit for teams of all sizes, from solo developers to large organizations. You can click here on plugins on the website and you can search through and check out all the plugins for Jenkins. And they say they have 1900 plus community contributed Jenkins plugins to support building and deploying and automating any project. So super dope application. They have everything documented, like installing the Jenkins pipeline, managing Jenkins, securing Jenkins systems administration. So this is definitely where you want to go. Once I walk you guys through the install of Jenkins, let's go down and hop over to my virtual machine so we can get to installing Jenkins on Ubuntu server. Let's get to it. All right, so I'm connected to my Ubuntu server installed on Proxmox and it's 24.04. It's already updated, but I just wanna run through the command to update the server, but all you have to do is type sudo app to update and then ampersand ampersand sudo app upgrade and dash Y and that will upgrade your server for you. It will basically refresh all the repositories and then if there are any updates for the server, then you can run through those real quick. I already have my system fully updated. Let's move forward with the process. Now let's go down clear because there is a dependency. Jenkins runs on Java. So we need to build that out first. So all we have to do is type sudo apt install and Java is within the Ubuntu repository. It's open JDK and then we can tab it out so you can see the different versions of it. But you can go all the way up to 21. And the one we are actually gonna install is Java 17. That's the one that's recommended based on Jenkins documentation. And so all we had to do is type 17 and then we need that JRE on the end of it. And then also there is another dependency and that's the font config. And let's just make sure this is installed on the server as well. So let's go down press enter. This will go through and install Java for us as well as that other dependency that we saw. I'll be back when these installations complete. All right, so Java is installed and we can check out the Java version by typing Java-V, press enter. And actually I forgot, it's Java Tech version. So they'll tell you what version you have on here. So we got OpenJDK version 17.0.11. And make sure you guys check on the Jenkins website to verify the current supported version of Java that's needed for Jenkins. Cause I know it's Java 21 out there right now, but I recommend 17. So I just wanted to let you guys know. All right, so now that that's done, let's go down and get Jenkins installed. If we go to installing Jenkins, uh, and then we go down to Linux, it has all the prerequisites up here at the top, minimum hardware requirements, 256 megabytes of RAM, one gigabit of drive space, a recommended hardware configuration right there as well. You also need Java, like I was saying. There are two different versions of Jenkins you can install. There's a long-term supported release, which lasts for 12 weeks. And this is considered their stable release for that time period. And then there's also the weekly release with bug fixes and features and all that stuff that comes from the developers. It'll come pretty quicker with the weekly release versus the long-term supported release. So just make your decision on which one you wanna install. But as you can see, we have to install a PPA to get it on our server. Now let's go down and switch back over to our terminal so we can continue the install. So now let's go down and add our repository and the key. 
So I got a command here and I'll just paste it in here and kind of walk you guys through it right fast. But this is going to download our GPG key for that repository. And it's the Debian stable, which works on Ubuntu. So let's go down and press enter. That'll add the key to our system. Now let's go down and add our repository. So we can install Jenkins directly from the repository. So this is basically going to create a list file under our sources list. And as you can see, this is where it's going to store it, but it's going to add that repository location so we can download from that repository. So let's go down and press enter. That'll add that to our system as well. And now that that's done, all we have to do is type sudo apt updates. And this will refresh the repositories. Now, all we have to do is install Jenkins. So all you have to do is type sudo app install. And then we can do dash y. That'll go through and install it for us. And I'll just go down and let this go. But this will get everything you need on the system set up for Jenkins. All right. So we're finished with the installation. All we have to do is start the service. So we can type sudo systemctl and then start. And then the package name is Jenkins. So press enter. It'll start it. And then we're going to enable it as well. So it'll start on reboot so each time it reboots jenkins will start up on the system now we can go down and check the status of it it should be running if we did everything correctly yours should be running as well and you can just run the status command and you'll see that jenkins is started so it says active running it's enabled this lets you know that the service is enabled and so it'll start up every time the server reboots so you don't have to go in and mess with anything press q and that's pretty much it let's say your server that you set this up on has the firewall turned on well you need to go into ufw which is installed on ubuntu server by default and we can check the status of it right now it's i'm sure it's not on this is a new server it doesn't come by default with the firewall turned on but you may want to turn it on and you may want to open up the port so let's type sudo ufw status and we can check it it'll say inactive if it's, if it's not enabled so let's go down and add some rules right fast because I'm going to enable it so you guys can kind of see it. Yeah, we can skip this step and go straight to the server from here because you access it from the browser. But let me show you guys this in case you want to turn on your firewall. Let's say it's in the cloud or something and you only want to open up that one port, then this is a good thing to do. So sudo ufw allow first thing you want to allow is open ssh because we're doing everything right now from open ssh so you may need to get into the server to troubleshoot something or if jenkins stopped working you can go into the server because if you don't open up this port you'll lose access to ssh so let's go down press enter that'll add the rule for that and the default port for jenkins is 8080 and so all we have to do is type 8080 sudo ufw allow 8080 so that'll open up that port as well now we can activate our firewall so all you have to do is type sudo ufw enable and this will enable our firewall this is a warning basically saying this will disrupt your existing ssh connection if you don't have that port open but since we have that port open we're not going to lose connection so the firewall is active and then we can also run the status command again so we can type sudo ufw status check our firewall and you'll see that open ssh is open and then port 8080 is open on our server all right so now let's get it configured i'm gonna switch over to my browser the way you get to it is by the ip address before i leave the terminal type ipa and this will give you your ip address or if you're in a cloud just look at your cloud manager the public ip address should be there copy it switch over to our browser open up a new tab type in our ip address it is port 80 80. But if you're planning on setting this up as a production server, I recommend you do a SSL cert so the connection is secure. And it's always a good thing to just put a cert on your server. Otherwise, you're going to run into this issue right here where it says not secure. Now, this is step one of the configuration. And this is a good thing that they put this here just because when you do this like in the cloud or something, uh, a lot of applications, they'll just have it open to the world. So if someone finds your server, before you get there, they can set themselves up as the administrator and have access to your full server. And the only thing you can kind of do, because they'll probably set their own password, is delete the virtual machine and start from scratch, which we don't want to do. But I'm glad they put this in here to unlock our Jenkins server. And it gives you the location. It puts it under var lib Jenkins secret and initial admin password. So let's switch back over to our terminal so we can get that information there. And so all we have to do, we can cat it out, hopefully. I don't know if it should, you should be able to just cat it out. So cat lib. And then there's a Jenkins directory and we might have to type sudo because this stuff is 
probably owned by sudo so initial admin and then password and it's not allowing me to tab it out so it may be owned by the root so let's just go and put sudo in there and there is no directory that's weird oh and i actually went to the wrong directories it is under secrets so there's a secrets directory and then the initial admin password. Just copy this. Let's switch back over to the browser and paste that on up in here and hit continue. And that'll unlock the server. Now, one of the things I want you to do is customize your Jenkins by installing the suggested pl plug. This will give you most of the time all the tools and plugins that you most likely will need. So I'm gonna install just the suggested ones. It's gonna go through, it gives you an idea of everything that's on it. And you'll see it go through the process of installing dependencies and then installing the plugins that that you need for it for it so i'll just kind of wait until it's finished it i'll come back when it completes all right so once it install all those plugins it just kind of goes to the next step which is creating our first admin account and so i'll just name it kit as my username and then just type in a super strong password for it actually let's go back up let's make it kit underscore admin and then let's confirm our passwords and then you can type in your information so i'm gonna just type my full name is keep it techie and then my email address, keep it techieedge.com. And then let's go down and hit save and continue. So that'll create our first account. This is a Jenkins URL. So if you want to update it to a domain that you have or something like that, point it to this server, then you can do that because this is local on my network. And you may want to do that if it's local on your network. So let's hit save and finish and then start using Jenkins. So we are logged into our account and I don't know if you guys seen that in the plugins, but if we go into configure right fast and then under the configuration, there is a dark theme. So let's hit apply and save and boom, let's go back to the dashboard. I just wanted to set this up because I like the way dark themes look on most websites. So just my personal preference, but you can set it up however you want to. That's the first thing I do when I install any new piece of software. I see if they got a dark mode and I activate it right away. All right, so now that we got it set up and configured properly, let's do something a little cool. And I'll use one of my GitHub repositories. What I wanna do is set up a simple CI pipeline that pulls code from a repository, runs a test, and then send a notification. And this example will give you a test of what Jenkins can do. And so let's go down and hit new item and we can name it whatever we want. I'm gonna just put K-I-T and then tag CI, that's fine. That'll work for me. And then use a freestyle project. That's fine, that's the classic, press okay. And then you can also give it a description. I don't know, this is my Minecraft. I'm gonna use that repository for it. I'll just copy and paste it in there, but just wanted to at least show you guys how to do it, but let's see code or CI and boom. Once you got that done, I'm gonna just go right to source code management. And then we're gonna use Git because I need to grab my repository. And what you need to grab is your clone link, not the repository URL. Specify the URL or path to the Git repository. This uses the same syntax as your Git clone command. So you essentially have to grab that, that link to clone the repository. And we can turn that off. We don't need to see it. And we don't need any credentials because it's not like it's a private repository, it's public. So we should be good to go there. Let's say you only want to look at a branch a separate on a system and build it out. Then you can use a separate branch. We're going to use the master, which is fine. And that's most likely where you would need credentials as well. If you're using a branch and it's like under your, if, if it's not a public branch, then you probably need those credentials for that as well. Now let's go under build triggers. I just kind of want to show you guys this. And what I'm gonna do, you can go through and check out the information under each one of these and what they actually do. So trigger builds remotely from script. You can build after other projects are built. So once another project is built, you can do that. You can set it up based on time. And so you can schedule this. One cool thing about it, it actually uses the cron format in order to put it all together. So I'm gonna click in here. This will give you examples. Like I said, check out the notes on this thing. For instance, it says every 15 minutes. I'm gonna use that. And then also it's good to specify your time zone. So all you have to do is type TZ equals, and then you wanna put in your time zone after that. And let's see if we can find, let's see America and then Los Angeles, cause I'm on the West Coast. So let's say we wanna run it on time. And there we go, I know I passed it. There we go, so just grab it. You have to put it in that format, go back up to the top and you need to put the time zone at the top of this. So TZ, which is for time zone equals America, Los Angeles. And then we wanna do it every 15 minutes. 
and then boom this will show you if everything is correct which i'm not sure why this is how, oh that's my uh, browser that's doing that trying to get me to spell it a certain way but we're good to go in the trigger section and let's go under the build section section so this is the build environment but the build environment you could delete the workspace before the build starts you can use secret text or files add a timestamp to the console output inspect build logs for published build scans terminate a build if it's stuck and then also some ant options what I'm gonna do is go under the build steps and we're gonna execute some stuff in the shell right fast. What I'm gonna do is just run a test against the script that I have. And this is essentially a project I started a while back that goes through and install a Minecraft server. And then I'm gonna go down and paste it in here cause I already basically know everything about this script cause I built it obviously, but it's gonna clone the repository. So get clone, grab the repository. It's gonna go CD into the project directory and then chmod the install.sha script in there and basically change it to executable. And then we run the script and it'll say test pass after that. That's pretty much it. All we have to do is hit save. So you put whatever script you want in there, you good to go. And then one thing you could do, we have it open. So if we go back to the dashboard, you'll see it there and it's waiting for that scheduled time, but you can also run it right off. So I'm gonna go back into it. You can open up the actual job and then you can click build now and it's a build or you can run it from the front page. So this will schedule a build for KITCI. But like I said, I'm gonna build it now. And then you, down here in the build history, you'll start seeing it spin up the system and testing the code and it ran into a, a problem I, i'm not sure exactly what happened this is my first time running it against this script but let's see exactly what happened so git version let's see git fetch boom git config timeout couldn't find any revision to build verify the repository so it's looking for a revision to it which i didn't mean for it to look for any revisions ah and i think i know what the issue is it's not master it's main so yeah sorry about that so let's go back under we could delete this build but let's delete that one because we know that one is wrong and it didn't work properly, but you can go in here and edit our build again. Let's go back down to the source code management. No, we need to look at main. I'm not sure why it puts that in there by default. Main is typically what you wanna do. So as far as the branch to build, the main branch essentially. So let's go down, let's hit save and let's try to run this thing again. So let's hit build now and it's running. It hasn't failed us and it actually ran. Okay, cool. So we got a successful run and we can check out the information about it. So two milliseconds, uh, 3.8 build duration and it's from the repository and it pulled the main. And then also we can go to the console output. This will go through and basically that's why I use this script because I knew it had some user input and it's basically gonna exit out if no valid choice and it wasn't gonna run through the full process. So as long as the script doesn't have any user input, it'll run through the whole test. I just knew the script has some user input and it was gonna kinda fail on its own but not cause an error on Jenkins. It'll look as though it successfully ran the script. And so that's Jenkins in a nutshell. If you followed all my steps, you have Jenkins set up on Ubuntu server and you ran through a CI job using a GitHub repository. You can use mine, you can use yours, whatever. And you ran a successful test like I did if you followed all my steps. Jenkins is a powerful tool that can take your development workflow to the next level by automating all those repetitive tasks. If you found this video helpful, go down and smash that like button, subscribe to the Keep It Techie channel for more tech tutorials, and leave a comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. Again, thanks for watching, and until next time, keep it techie. Whenever I talk to people, whenever I mentor people uh, dealing with, you know, getting into tech, you gotta figure out what you like or what you're interested in, because yeah, a lot of people get into the, you know, tech field because you can make a good amount of money. The money is the motivator. But you also, in my opinion, in order for you to be happy, you got to like what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And so, like for me, a lot of times it doesn't feel like work, bro. Most times it really doesn't feel like work. It's, it's yeah, I'm doing something fun. I'm doing something I love to do. You know what I'm saying? So that's what makes it, you know, great for me.